my honor to present to you Leonard Kleinrock, engineer, inventor, teacher, and the founding father of the internet. Leonard Kleinrock, a distinguished professor of computer science at UCLA, has made seminal research contributions in communication networks, establishing the fundamental principles upon which many of the most important aspects of computer networking and information communications are based. As a graduate student at MIT in the early 1960s, he developed the key mathematical background to packet switching, the fundamental building block of the internet. His founding work on internet technology arose from his host computer, becoming the first node of the network, directing the first message transmission on the 29th of October in 1969. Further, his theoretical work on hierarchical routing is now critical to the operation of today's worldwide internet. A recipient of numerous honorary degrees and honors, he has published extensively on packet switching networks, packet radio networks, local area networks, broadband networks, gigabit networks, nomadic computing, intelligent software agents, performance evaluation, and peer-to-peer -peer networks. Throughout his career, Kleinrock has been a tireless proponent and a spokesperson behind the development of computer and communication networks. Both directly and indirectly, Kleinrock has made countless contributions to global efforts in information communication. Through his profound accomplishments over 45 years, Kleinrock has inspired generations of researchers, both students and co-workers, who today span the computer networking field. Mr. Deputy Chancellor, on behalf of Senate and the Board of Governors, it's my privilege and honor to present to you Leonard Kreinrock so that you, can, you may confer upon him the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. So Deputy Chancellor Wiener, Vice Chair Amir, President Shepard, members of the platform party, graduates, and friends. <clears throat> Thank you for inviting me here. I appreciate the opportunity to address you, young graduates, class of 2013, on this important graduation day for you. The world you are entering is malleable, fluid, changing, uncertain, unfair, and wonderful especially today. Disruptive events and disruptive technologies are constantly stunning us, and they provide for you the greatest opportunities as you emerge from this institution with your new skills, your new tools, and your dreams. You've managed to fulfill all of the academic requirements. You've succeeded in that quest. You understand that structure, you follow the rules, and today I want to tell you it's time to break out of that structure. The title of my address today is Breaking Boundaries, and the key idea here is that disruption is desirable. It creates unexplored spaces between dimensions and disciplines in that they erode traditional boundaries that previously constrained you constraints under which you've been living for most of your life. You're at a stage in your life now, as is the world you're entering, where you need to break through hitherto 
existing limiting boundaries and barriers. And today I'm going to list seven boundaries that you should break through. The first one is the boundary of time. You are not signing up for a nine to five job. That artificial boundary has evaporated. We're now talking about a 168 hour per week commitment. You should be thinking about science and engineering all the time when you're talking to your neighbors, when you're shopping in the mall, and especially when you're showering. The best ideas, as you know, occur then. In addition, in this time dimension, you've been carefully fed 4,000 years of civilization's pearls of wisdom. You learned the principles of levers and pulleys, Maxwell's equations, differential equations, the kinetic theory of gas, information theory, algorithms, metallurgy, aerodynamics, genetics, et cetera, et cetera. And now you're on your own. You need to break the boundary of the packaged lecture and dive in without the crutch of a structured curriculum. Now you make the rules. You choose the path and principles you respect. You have the responsibility to lead yourself. When we guided you as faculty members, we fed you the best, and we led you to believe that these gems of knowledge were easily discovered. Well, we lied to you. Okay? Moving the frontier is not easy. In fact, it's really hard. But the point is not to be discouraged, since all those gems we presented to you were themselves works of great effort, failure, restart, and determination. Don't be surprised if it's tough. It is tough. Failure is good as long as you try again. In fact, that is perhaps one of nature's most important lessons, adapt or die. The second boundary I want to talk about breaking is the boundary of geography. You must think globally. As Tom Friedman told us, the world is flat. Everything is, con everything is connected to everything else, and geography is fast dissolving. You must think globally. The third boundary I want you to break out of is the boundary of discipline. Be it double E or CS, or be mechanical, chemical, civil, aerospace, etc. The opportunities lie in the unexplored spaces between those disciplines. That is interdisciplinary work. Examples, biology and engineering in general, CS and double E, energy and civil engineering, materials and manufacturing, transportation and environment. That's where you'll find the ability for you to make an impact and create. The fourth boundary I'd like you to think about breaking is the boundary of predictable technology. The internet is for you a tremendous source of challenge and opportunity, yet most of its dominant applications have been unpredicted and unanticipated. Examples, email, the World Wide Web, Google, peer-to-peer -peer file sharing systems, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, blogs, music, photo, and video self-generated technologies. None of those were predicted, and everyone in the came at us hit us on the side of the head and suddenly dominated our attention. And on the other hand, the internet is, in my judgment, in its juvenile years, and it's acting like a teenager. It's mischievous, erratic, unruly, and disobedient. And one day it may mature. We hope it will in the proper way. The fifth boundary I'd like you to break is the boundary of grasp. Many years ago, as a young man, I joined the Boy Scouts. And I rose through the elementary ranks. And at one point, my scoutmaster told me, Len, you can become the first Eagle Scout in this troop. Now, to become an Eagle Scout in those days, and even today, was not an easy task. And it was basically just beyond my grasp. I just couldn't see how to get there. I knew it was a terrifically hard goal. And so I took on the challenge. And I wouldn't be telling you this story if I didn't succeed. But the point is, having made that success out of something that I really had to work at, set a tough goal and achieve, gave me the confidence that I could achieve. And that kind of confidence has enabled me to pursue other difficult, out of reach tasks throughout my life. So I urge you to reach beyond your grasp whenever you can. The sixth boundary, the boundary of peer pressure. 
Another story, when I got to graduate school at MIT, I started working for, by, well, who's then the most well-known and fantastic professor there, a gentleman named Claude Shannon. And if you haven't come across him before, that's your homework for tonight. Check up Claude Shannon. He created information theory and coding theory. Well, I looked around at my classmates. All the graduate students were doing work in the field he had created. But Shannon had done most of the important critical work. And what was left behind were really hard problems, which I judged were not going to be of great significance. And I said, no, I didn't sign up for that. I want to do something with more impact. So I looked around. I was surrounded by computers. And I decided one day they're going to have to talk to each other. There's no good technology to do that. And so I worked on what you heard was to create the elements of the internet. My point here is, don't follow the pack. Stake out new territory. Have courage to step outside your comfort zone. Find an area that is fresh and unmined, because therein lies the low-hanging fruit. And it'll be easy, will have an impact, will be enormously gratifying. And once you succeed in an area, be willing to alter the direction in which you're going. Once in a field gets too crowded, be willing to shift slightly to find yet new, unmined areas in which you can contribute. The last boundary I'd like you to think about breaking is the internet, is the boundary of your own internal architecture. Wake up calls can, in fact, disrupt your internal architecture. Another story. My, the first course I took at MIT as a graduate student, I was told it would behoove me to do well in this course, because in this course, they separate the men from the boys. And on the midterm exam, I got a 50. Now, I had never seen anything south of 95 for, for years. And I recognized there was something wrong in the way I was approaching this new environment in which I was competing. I had to change my study habits, my commitment, my approach, my thinking, the level of effort, and I did. And by the way, I got an A in the course. But my point to you is, basically, a wake-up call can be, is a disruptive, disruptive event. It allows you, gives you the opportunity to restructure your own architecture and to respond to the disruption. How you respond is critical. One thing you could do is go hide in the corner with the tail between your legs and basically complain. The other is to take on the challenge, recognize there's something that needs correction, and do it. So in summary, this is an important milestone event for you, as you heard. And it's important to mark the milestones in your life and to celebrate them. It allows you to keep track of where you are. More importantly now, you should find the unexplored spaces that appear when you break boundaries. This is a time to make important choices of how you approach the rest of your life. The future offers enormous opportunities. And along the way, unanticipated choices will be presented to you. Keep your eyes open for them. Be ready to recognize them and think about acting on them. There's lots of great work to do. The game has just begun. The internet is in its early stages. And when you do your planning and designing, be sure not to preclude any possibilities that you can't now anticipate. Don't block things off before you understand what's possible. You're in charge of what happens in your story from here on out. There's no script to follow in life. Uncertainty and excitement will be your constant companions. It's the journey, not the destination. It's not the awards that you receive. It's the path to getting there. That's the fun, the excitement, the challenge, and the gratification. The striving that I went through to go from a poor kid in Manhattan to this podium, it's the path I took, and not so much the achievements that I remember very well. Furthermore, be absolutely sure to select something you really enjoy doing for your life work. Don't ever sell yourself short. They'll never pay you enough to do something you don't enjoy. So I say work on what you really care about. You shouldn't waste your time working on anything else. And along the way, it's often hard to recognize the critical events that you're working on when they first occur. Therefore, treat all your work as important and be sure to do your work well in every instance. Don't be sloppy about it. 
have confidence in yourself, believe you can achieve, but you alone are in charge of what happens. You are your own main competitor and you are your own final judge. You'll make the choices, you'll experience the adventures, you'll reap the rewards and suffer the consequences. Remember that good fortune and timing may be important components of your success. So it's not all you, it's what happens out there with you. Your new companions, as I say, will be fear, excitement, challenge, failure, and gratification. So as a final word, as we rush headlong into the future, we must not forget the lessons of the past. Most of you can't remember a time when there was no internet. You can't imagine that your parents sitting behind you are of this era, your bold, new, brave era. So I'd like to tell you a little story. The senior citizen was at a baseball game sitting in the bleachers. And sitting next to him was a young techie. And as the game went on, the young techie kept looking at the senior citizen. And finally, he couldn't help himself. And he said, sir, I have to tell you, I've been watching you. There's no way I feel I can relate to you. When you were born, there was probably no television, no jet planes, maybe there was radio, certainly no internet, certainly no computers, no Facebook, no Google. I don't know how to relate to you. So the senior citizen says, you know, young man, you're right. We didn't have those things. So we had to invent them. What are you going to do to push the ball out of the park? Well, you can, and you will, and that's a challenge. Thank you very much. Dr. Kleinrock, well done and well said, and thank you for those inspirational remarks. I'm sure we're all going to go big or go home. So I wish you great success and we thank you again for your remarks.